I think the NBA is messing up, man. Mm. I think I we, like a little bit. The jo- if it, I, it, it look, it feels like Joel Embiid's injury last night could have been avoided. And even still, even still, before and and welcome into the insider. I forgot to start recording again. That's fine. Good start, Kyle. Uh, I look. <clears throat> this has, so if you if you missed it, uh, the Sixers played at the Warriors last night, second game of back to back. Uh, for for the 76ers, Joel Embiid played. Uh, he only played 29 minutes for Philly in their loss to the Warriors. But anybody who watched five minutes of that game understood that he was compromised in some way. Oh yeah, he was not. I, he I, he's not like a he doesn't move like a guard anyways <laughs> he's he definitely has the body of a of a much older person but i mean he's averaging what is it 36, 36. 11 and 6 this year like he's he's fine he's been really good and probably the mvp of the league again however <clears throat> because of the in part because of the new you know limit on number of games you can play or number of games you can miss, I guess, before you aren't eligible for postseason awards and all in the end stuff. He forced himself to play mm-hmm. through what was clearly an injury. Last night he goes for 14, 7, and 2. He was 5 of 18 from the field and he had eight turnovers. Okay, so and then he gets hurt. Here's the problem that I have. Like, yes, Joel Embiid is amazing. And he's playing at an MVP level. Mm-hmm. But if he's forcing himself out there onto the court because he has to hit a certain game number, mm. it's kind of the point, Kyle. Like an MVP can't play fifty-seven games. That's no, not I, an MVP. No, I I, I totally yeah. I, I don't I don't disagree with that at all, and I don't hate the idea of of saying if you're a voter and going, yeah, hey, you got to play sixty-five for me. Yeah. Like that's, that's fine. And this is not my, my whole, my whole thing with this is I think we've, we've reached the point of we're no longer stopping load management. We're now seeing players get hurt because they're trying to get to this mystical, the, magical yeah, this, 65 this, game mark. Uh, what's yeah. the, like this objective just kind of like, yeah, Hey, 65 games is the number. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, 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 the, the difficulty in this is like, you're right. You have to play. Yeah. That's the point. And you see Kawhi Leonard playing more. You see guys like Steph Curry playing more. And that's that. I mean, across the league, players are missing fewer games and that's good. That's, that's the goal. <clears throat> but the goal was not to say, Hey, yeah, you should play hurt. No, but that's, that's kind of what this is doing now. And <clears throat> I guess it's okay because in in some sense and and help me out i'm kind of talking myself through this i understand the the need for players to play yes i get that and i want players to play i even understand the league regulating like totally. making it an issue and, right. and and pushing it the the issue i get to with this is tying this to all nba which is then tied to your earning potential as a player that's where the gray area lies. And yeah. that's the, that's what bothers me about it. Go ahead. Hey, I, I will tell you that for years, um, Scott Howard Cooper was around, you know, he lived in, he lives in Sacramento. He, mm-hmm. he covered the NBA for years and years and years as a, as a writer at the B, as a writer for NBA.com. He had not only a hall of fame vote, but also, you know, uh, all of your, your standard, you know, all-star, everything mm-hmm. else. He always had the opinion which he he was open about, so I'm not like spilling the beans on Scott Howard Cooper here, but he felt that it wasn't okay for media to impact that exact thing. Yeah, that's crazy that that happens. Because when the media votes and and a guy either makes an all NBA team or Mm -hmm. doesn't, you're controlling a player's money. Yes. Like his potential earnings. Because like if you make all NBA two years in a row before your, your contract extension, you jump from being eligible for 30% of the salary cap to 35% of the salary cap. And so the money, we're talking huge, huge amounts of money. Right. 
not a little bit of money. Right. We're talking about on a gigantic deal, 5% times five years is a tremendous amount of money. Right. And he was always like, I, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable that we're like, if players have incentives for making an all-star team mm -hmm. that we're helping them either achieve or not achieve yeah. those things. And I get it. Um, but at the same time, I, I think the league had a problem and the, definitely. And if anyone, the Sacramento Kings last year exposed that problem, mm -hmm. the Kings were the healthiest team in the league because they played every day. Everyone went out there like, okay, Demonis Savonis has a broken bone in his right hand mm -hmm. or uh, well, he had an avulsion fracture, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the tendon pulled off the bone. Uh, it, that but, sounds awful by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, it sounded absolutely horrible, but, uh, you know, Keegan Murray had an injury like that and, and De'Aaron Fox had injuries. The Kings played through them and they mm. showed that sometimes playing every game keeps you as healthy as, as, you know, resting. Mm -hmm. And that's why the league, I, it's not the only reason the league did it. The league has it, its own investment in this mm -hmm. where fans are going to games expecting to see Kawhi Leonard or expecting to see Steph Curry. Well, yeah, and they show up, they spend a bunch of money and they don't get to see that player because that player is resting that night. And these TV networks pay billions of dollars yeah. for these deals to get good games. And then, hey, oh, we got Warriors Celtics tonight and Steph Curry's out and Draymond Green's out and Klay Thompson's out and yeah. Jason Tatum's resting. And now it's Peyton Pritchard against Jordan Poole. You know, like that's that's what they were trying to avoid. And so, like I said, yeah. I... I'm stuck in a in a in a in the middle here a little bit because I understand the league needing to to cut down on just the raw load management. Yeah, like the hey, you know what? Pencil in Chris Paul for sixty games, whether he's hurt or healthy, he is not playing more than sixty. And that went for like I said, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Steph Curry. Like pick a pick a player. It was it's always like hey, when was the last time that guy played more than seventy five games in a year? Yeah, like, oh, 2012, like so long ago, right? So I under, I, I, I totally get that, but my, my concern comes in, or I guess my, my, my question in all this is one, there's the aspect of tying it to all NBA and your ability to make more money. Because now, look, if a player rolls their ankle, and let's say, let's say De'Aaron Fox, but earlier this season when he rolled his ankle, mm -hmm. had to miss 16 games. He is no longer at no wait 17. Yeah, you, yes. you have to miss 18. You can miss up to 17. You have to play 65 okay. games. So let's say he missed 18 games. He's yep. just out. He can no one, he's just done. He can't be all NBA anymore. Even if he plays the rest of the season and averages 38 points a game, plays 64 games. He just he can't he can't be all NBA now. Yeah. Like that. And and that's where and that's where my my problem comes in is because now if you're and again, I'm picking De'Aaron Fox's ankle because of the thing that happened this year. So if he's sitting there at game 17 and he's like, you know what? I'm not quite ready, but I got to get out there because I could mess my money up. And then something, something, you know, God forbid worse happens because he's compromised in this way and playing on it. I, I'm that's, that's where you see this could get a little bit messy and a little bit ugly. And I think with Joel Embiid, being an MVP candidate or MVP front runner, whatever word you want to use going out, clearly being hurt. And then in last night's game, getting injured. Yeah. That's, that was a on national TV, mind you, that's just a really high profile example of how this can go sideways. And I don't know what the league does to fix it outside of, okay, maybe you drop the threshold to 60 games, which I, I maybe, uh, ultimately though we we always get back to this every time we we any nba fan talks about this it's like they need to play fewer games yeah and that's but that's never going to happen so it's trying to find solutions within that i'm just not totally sure that a 65 games come hell or high water is the solution well i would okay so a couple of things here number one joel Embiid has been hurt throughout his entire career no right? doubt like no doubt he missed the first two years of his career his second, his his first official year in in the NBA played thirty one games. Just for context, guess how many play how many games he played last year when he won the MVP? Oh, uh, fifty eight, sixty six. So 
when we come up with an arbitrary <laughs> number, I'm wondering if that arbitrary number wasn't based off of something that actually happened. Yeah. Where they slid in a number and said, okay, you have to play more than 60. You had to play 65. Yeah, right? 60, 65 is just like a good round number, though. That's not I guess unreasonable. It's a, well, 66 would have been really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been like, sure. uh, is this a Joel Embiid rule? Yeah. But so here's the problem. Like, you, I, I don't think you should be able to be an MVP if you can't stay healthy long enough to to actually impact your the bottom line, which is wins and losses. Mm -hmm. And a player who, sure, if they win like 80% of the games he plays, they're they're probably going to make the playoffs either way. Mm -hmm. But if he's missing 25 games a year, sure, that's just, it's too much. It's too yeah. much to be considered one of those guys because what happens in the other 25 games? And that's part of it. I mean, part of, you know, again, we bring it up with Harrison Barnes. Part of what makes Harrison Barnes valuable as a player, he's got, he's at 185 straight games played. Right. He, yeah. he shows up every night mm -hmm. and other guys don't. And there is value to that. And I'm not putting Harrison Barnes in the same category as Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking at... No, I get you know, what you're saying, though. Yeah. And if I'm looking at two players that, that may or may not make all NBA... And mm -hmm. one of them plays 79 games and plays with a broken hand the whole time. Mm -hmm. And the other one plays like 58 games and, and doesn't play through injury and misses a bunch of other games, but his stats are better. Mm -hmm. Someone like Anthony Davis, then yeah. Well, like, what am I talking <laughs> about? Pick a player. Let's make one up. Let's call yeah, him let's just, Anthony Davis. <laughs> let's just make one up. Uh, you know, and we'll like, you know, seven yeah, no, footer I, I, with the no, unibrow. Like, like I said, I, I don't, I don't hate that premise at all. And I, in fact, I agree with it a player who impacts his team for 50 games is just by definition, not as impactful as a player who did the same thing for his team in 75 games. Yeah. Like that's just, I, I, that's, that's basic math. And the NBA had to put a number on it. I, I, again, I understand why, because they couldn't just have teams willy nilly going, all right, well, let's see. Um, every back to back, anybody over 30 is not going to play. Mm -hmm. And, um, in the middle of every road trip, this guy's getting a night off. And oh, national TV game, it's a back to back. Yeah, too bad. Sorry, guys. Everybody's going to sit. So I understand it to an extent. Um, but I also, uh, my other question on this is, you know, how much of it is team driven? How much of it is, how much of it is sports performance, health? Uh, uh, science people? I don't, I don't know what they're even called. Trainers, yeah. trainers, athletic staff going, yeah, hey, you know what? we've been doing all these measurements and your heart rate and your explosiveness. And you know what you need, you're taking tonight off. I get it, Kyle. I, I, I don't think there's any true solution before we get to the break. I'll yeah. just say Anthony Davis, 36 games, 40 games, 56 games. Lo and behold, they put a cap on how many games to make an all NBA team. He's a 46 through like 48. Mm -hmm. So it actually is impacting oh, it, whether it, guys play or not. No doubt. No Why doubt. Leonard? Same thing. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we got plenty to get to. We'll continue this discussion for sure. Uh, LeBron got saved by the bell yesterday. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll play that sound for you. If you haven't heard it, it's pretty funny. And uh, the Kings are in Miami tonight to face the Heat. They were in Miami yesterday, and now they're in Miami again tonight. They will play tonight against the Miami Heat. We will begin previewing that game as well. That's James Ham. I'm Kyle Mads, and we're the Insiders. And this is ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. Kyle. My B. No stress. Mm. They are ready for a rainstorm. I'm just getting emergency service. Like they're testing the uh, the code red emergency service alert system. Ready to stay, uh, stay dry here in the next couple of days. Get your, uh, uh, you can't come to my house and with all my boats, if we all get washed <laughs> away, I'll, I'll pick up some of you on the way down the hill, but not all of you. The party barge can only take so many. Hi, Rob W. What up, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my keys to the game is, hey, maybe just stay inside on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> 
or hey, maybe uh, a breathalyzer is needed. Oof. Just saying. Um. Okay. I, I I like your name, tall Chinese guy. Is there a real chance the Kings get Jimmy Butler? Vegas odds have them third. I, last time I checked, Jimmy Butler wasn't available. If Jimmy Butler becomes available, I could easily see the Kings saying, yes, that is a guy that even though he's older, um, we're all in. Because he brings that personality that, that I think. dog. Th yeah, yeah. He he might be one of the, the bigger dogs in the league. Um, hmm. It's a good question. Like, I, I haven't heard anything on Jimmy Butler. The fact that Vegas has an odds on it, I mean. That that seems strange. That's how, dude. That's how Vegas keeps the lights on, bro. I guess it's somebody, some Kings fan sees that, or that's how sports book keeps sports books keep the lights on. Get some Kings fan who's down in Vegas, like Jimmy Butler plus eight hundred to be on the Kings. Yeah, I'll put hundred bucks on that. That's a free hundred dollars. So Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler's getting traded. Forty five million, forty nine million, fifty two million. Ugh. He'll he will be. Oof, this is tough. I, I think the answer is no. And he's a high usage player who can't shoot. He will be 34, 35, and 36 making that money. A lot of miles, too. Uh yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're the Heat, you can't punt on this season either. Like I know they've lost seven in a row, but they made the finals mm -hmm. as the freaking eight seed last year. Like, yeah. On. Now, hey, if Miami wants to put Bam at a bio up for bid, um, then you give them all the monies. That's that's a player you go all in. And one of the reasons is because you instantly are able to sign Malik Monk no matter what the contract is. Uh, that's one of the Aaron Fox's boys. Uh, they, you know, that's the team. That's the they were the Kentucky team. Right King there, Kentucky is what we would call that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's probably the biggest mistake the Kings ever made. Right there is trading the number 10 pick for 15 and 20 and not just selecting Bam at a bio and pairing him with De'Aaron Fox for the next, you know, whatever years. All right, here we go. All right, I'm Kyle. That's James. The Sacramento Kings are in Miami tonight to take on the Miami Heat tip-off set for 430 Sacramento. They're rolling. They are on a four-game heater. They have won the first four games of their seven-game road trip. Meanwhile, the Miami Heat have done the opposite. <laughs> they have lost seven consecutive games. The Kings trying to make it eight losses in a row for them. And I, Miami is a weird team for me. Because I count them out every year. You should never count out right, Eric Spolstra. Right, right. right. They, never. Eric Spolstra is great. Jimmy Butler could be abysmal in the in the regular season, and you know that you're getting a, a, a top 15 guy in the playoffs every single year. Bam Adebayo is the like prototypical new age defensive athletic center. Like they've got all these pieces, and then they just figure it out, right? Well, on on the margins with Tyler Hero and they just you lose Gabe Vincent and and uh, Max Struess and you're just filling spots and even though they've lost seven in a row even though they may not be in a, in the top six yeah you know what the Heat are gonna make some noise in the playoffs yeah I'm always intrigued the way that Eric Spolstra during the playoffs is able to plug and play different players in different times in different positions and have it all work out. It's insane. He's the best coach in the league. Yeah, I do believe he is the best coach in the league, and I think he's totally underappreciated. It took a long time for him to find that appreciation because mm -hmm. of the Pat Riley situation and the fact that there was always that sort of like, oh, will Pat Riley step in type deal? There, like there was always that early on, and now it's just like, look, appreciate a guy for his craft, for what he does, mm -hmm. and the way that they assemble this team. Like this team is really, really intriguing. The fact that that they aren't winning right now, it feels a little bit like an aberration, but it doesn't really matter what seed they are. Yeah. They go into the playoffs and they beat everybody. And next thing you know, they're they're deep in the playoffs and and they're competing for a championship. And yep. they're one of the most impressive franchises that we've seen. 
it, it reminds me a lot of the uh, the San Antonio Spurs, where stability yeah. within the organization, all of that stuff, it matters. Mm -hmm. It fully matters. And this is a team that, you know, they have a home court advantage. It's called the South Beach Flu. Um, and, you know, Boy, guys, they. <laughs> guys like to go to... I think it's the realest home field advantage in the league or home court advantage. Home court. No, I, I totally think so. Yeah. Like everyone likes to go to Miami. They don't want to live there. Some guys do. And then sure. that that's its own problem. Sure. But other guys are like, oh, no, this is great. Two nights in Miami. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. I have a day off in Miami. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, the next day you oh. you lose a game on January 31 and you move on to, to February. That's right. Oh, um, <laughs> that's my number one concern. We'll talk keys later. Yeah. Keys to victory. But that is when you talk, we can sit here and we can talk about Tyler Hero and we can talk about Bam Adebayo and we can talk about Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolstra and, and Nikola Jovic and Caleb Martin, et cetera, et cetera. Jaime, et cetera. Hask Jaime Hawkes, of course. Hawkes. Yes. Of course. Might be the rookie of the year, right? So, <laughs> maybe maybe not Kyle. <laughs> I don't know. He's a basketball <laughs> hipster rookie of the year. Yeah. Um so like you can talk about all that and you can talk about X's nose and this and that. So, you know what? If the Kings come out flat tonight and they just don't have it. If the Kings get one of those one of those like we saw in Houston earlier this year where they just don't have it. It's uncompetitive. They lose by 25. I'm not going to I will not be on this show tomorrow. I will not be on the insiders here tomorrow and be like, yeah, I, they got to compete. Like, I just, you can't go into a game like that. I'm not going to do the doomsday thing. You're going to give them a, you're going to give them, they the break. get a pass for me tonight. They get a pass. I'd like to see them win. I would like to see them go play well and push Miami to eight consecutive losses and push their own winning streak to, to five. You would love to see that, that focus and that, that desire. Okay. But also, I'm not going to blame him if it's not there. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like if they have video of of Malik Monk out like doing salsa dancing, I, I, I'm here for it. <laughs> I am. I, I, I get what you're saying, Kyle. But, you know, the fact is that the Kings, while they they're up and down and they mm -hmm. haven't strung together like something that would build confidence in what's happening, mm -hmm. they have still won four in a row. And, and Kyle, at this point, they're the hottest team in the Western Conference. They are the they have the longest win streak in the Western Conference, the second longest winning streak in the NBA right now. Watch out. And uh, whether it's ugly or it's pretty, this is another game where you've got to go in and see if you can figure out how to compete. And I think that the Kings do have every opportunity. You're talking about a team that in the heat that are on a slide. They've lost seven in a row mm -hmm. uh, and you need everybody to show up and put on their brave face and, and try to go out there and win. I think the Kings and the, like all the time, the Miami heat have been in the league. The Kings won like five games there. That's it. Yeah. It is That's unbelievable. Like five their and inability or to something. win. Yeah. Wait, was it Darren Fox's rookie year that he had to put back dunk for the win? Oh yeah. I oh, uh, rookie or second year might've been his second year. Yeah. That was impressive. That's, that was that's sick. one of my favorite moments from him. Yeah. You know, the jam tip, like yeah. uh, he's, uh, yeah, definitely, um, like he came up big in a, in a huge moment. Yeah. At, at that on the road so. in Miami. Yeah. He probably didn't know any better. Like, oh, plus it was probably before he turned 21 and he couldn't go out anyway. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. That's Everyone good else point. around him is fully sick. And he's like, oh no, I got this guys. I got this. <laughs> hey, here's an interesting thing. And I'm, I, I, it, I'm sure this has been discussed. I've just never really put it together. Kevin Love plays for the heat. FYI. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing that's still happening. Um, I didn't know he was. Yeah, I mean, I, I know he's still in the roster, but yes, it. I think Domas is just the new version of Kevin Love, like the better version of Kevin Love. He doesn't shoot it as as often as as Love did, but just rebounds, heck of a passer. And again, Domas is a is a is a far better player than than Pete Kevin Love was. Okay, well, but I think Pete that Kevin Love style of player. To okay, me, I feel like there's a comp there that I've not ever connected. No, I, I think he. I would just say that Domas is much more of a strong man and love is more of a finesse player. I think um, when it comes to love, he's one of the great position rebounders that we've seen in the game over the last like 20 years. Like the guys don't come along like him that think the game, not only is he a great uh, 
like position rebounder where he knows exactly where the ball is going to come off the rim. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, he's one of the best outlet passers we've seen. And unbelievable. Unbelievable. What yeah. he can do for an offense is just amazing. I, I always thought, you know, I don't love Kevin Love as a defender. And, you know, there are plenty of things wrong with Kevin Love oh, yeah, as a player. Sure. But I also understand how he could have a tremendous amount of value for a team, which is why he's still playing and why the Miami Heat are like, hey, we're still in on Kevin Love, even though he's 35. His assist numbers aren't aren't as good as I thought they were. Um, in his third year as a pro, he averaged 15.2 boards. Oh, yeah. Per game. Yeah. And well, then 13, three, 14 and then 12 and a half. He had a very small window where he was one of the best rebounders. It's, it's almost like Andre Drummond. Like both of them have these windows where they're the best rebounder in the yeah. league. And, you know, sometimes it's not even close mm -hmm. and then they fade really quickly. Yeah. So, yeah, a heck of a player. If he can hit the three ball, he becomes like very, very dangerous. But I just don't think he doesn't play enough. He doesn't have. No, it. he's not. Yeah. I don't expect him to have a huge impact tonight. I just he's kind of just coasting in. Here's what here's the take I was trying to get to. I think Doma should shoot more threes, man. Oh, that's all. There it is. That's all. That's all I'm getting to against the Miami Heat tonight. How many? How many do you want? Five? I would like. No, I don't need that many. I would like three and a half attempts per game. Okay, that's what I would like. I don't disagree with that. Okay. Yeah, because they leave him open. There, there are those opportunities for him. Yeah, I'm with you. Is uh, is the Miami Heat legend still on the roster? I he's not right. Udonis Haslam finally called it a Yeah, yeah, no, he's done. Finally called it a career. Yeah. You know, last year, Udonis Haslam gave it to the Kings and at home on, on this. He, he showed up and scored more points than he had in like seven years. Yeah, he he had a six-year stretch where he played like 58 games total. Yeah. Man. Well, that and the points were even less. Uh -huh. But against the Kings, I think he put up like 12. And the Kings were like, <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> Naturally. All right. How do the Kings avoid losing in Miami tonight? We'll tell you that next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Later. Oh, that's funny. Hello, everybody. I'll be right back. Yep. Let's see. Sacramento... I always left something on again. I don't know what's happening. I think he unplugged his his ear his earphones. Um, was it? Yeah, Udonis Haslam. Maybe he did only score three points and just felt like more. I don't think so. Was it last year or was it the year before? Everything runs in together now. I don't know if that's just me. I might hang on. I might be able to turn this down. Oh, that's a mistake. Don't touch that button. <gasps> hey, I think I figured it out. Did that work, everyone? Uh oh. Hmm. That's right. You guys got you got me pegged now. You understand who I am, the core the core tenants of James. I don't touch buttons and we don't touch other people's privates. Oh, let's see if I figured out which one. You left something on back there and I just touched a button over here to make it quiet. Oh good. It's okay. I just the You potted me way down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think you unplugged your headphones on the way out the door. And uh, all of a it was... No, 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 no. I turned up the speaker in here. So when I walked back into this room. Oh, you knew where you were. Yes. Got it. Got it. Okay. My bad, y'all. What's happening? Okay. So I save this. Yeah, I feel bad for Darvin okay. Ham in, in L.A. because I think he's actually a decent coach. He's proven to be better than I think a lot of people thought. <clears throat> but you never take that job. That's the worst job in sports. That's a job you're going to get fired every time. Frank Vogel won a ring and then got fired right afterwards. Mike Brown got fired after like three minutes. 
Was it Earl Watson who got four games? Um, maybe. Um, but that was a nightmare. Yeah, that was a mess. Yeah, uh, Johnny series. Um, my thoughts on Herb Jones. I I love Herb Jones. I I just there is no way the Pelicans are trading Herb Jones to the Sacramento Kings. Like I, you look at his contract. He's like 10, 11, 12, 13 million. He's locked up for a long, cha- a long stretch. And if they're trading him, they're trading him to get better at the center position. That's what the word is. And the Kings can't make them better at the center position without completely destroying their entire franchise by trading Domas. So yeah, like he's not going anywhere unless. I think like Jared Allen becomes available and then they would probably consider it. Mm. All right, here we go. Party time. All right, at the break, we were talking about Darvin Ham and whether his days as the Lakers coach are numbered. I want to get to this LeBron sound. They were a few weeks ago, but I don't know now. Maybe they are. I don't know. Right, so so that was the weird thing is, I believe it was The Athletic reported, like, oh man, Darvin Ham's days are numbered. Somebody reported it. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was Sam Amick went down to L.A. to explore this was came away with the idea that no he's solid his yeah. job's not necessarily in danger sam yeah. has really good ties in la he always has yeah like as far as as a reporter mm-hmm. i mean he's a sacramento guy but his ties in la run deep yeah yeah he's and very so good at his job. whatever there is to know in in la he knows right and then so it's okay. Lakers are, you know, they're up and down, maybe not as good as they'd like to be. But again, last year they were, they were terrible at the trade deadline, made some moves and they made a run to the conference finals. Yep. <laughs> Here's LeBron's post game, the end of his post game locker room availability last night. There's a little bit of the question and then LeBron's answer. Uh, what would your message be to your teammate? What can you do yourself, you know, to get that, get the pick back on the winning side of things? I don't have any message for my teammates. Just go out and do your job. I mean, I'm not yet. Appreciate it. You had to cut me off because I was loving That's it. That's where the, the clip ends. I didn't cut that off. Or that's where that ends. Mm. Dude. He was about to go. He was about to go in on. I'm not the coach. It's not my job to give people something. He was going to go in on Darvin Ham, I think. That was my read on it. Okay. Maybe. Maybe, Kyle. But. I'm just going to say at the beginning of the year, we talked about this. If you put a group of players around LeBron James that are not winners, that have never been winners in their career, Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying they're losers. I'm saying that they're not winners. They're not guys who have historically found success in the league. And then you just go out and get all of them and think that that's going to be the way to build a squad around him. Mm -hmm. then you got problems. The way to build a squad around LeBron James is pretty simple. Shooters, shooters, more shooters. Uh, Once you get as many shooters as you think you, you need, you go get three more. That's the way to build a team around him. He draws more of a crowd than any player in the NBA and everyone is open. Mm -hmm. But when you don't go do that and you assemble a team of misfit toys Guys who have, again, not found success anywhere else. You got to look at it like, hey, whose fault is this? You know, is it is it LeBron for stepping in and saying, hey, I don't want the Buddy Heald trade. I want the Russell, Russell Westbrook. Wilson uh, Westbrook trade, mm-hmm. right? Is that what you do? Like, where do we put the blame? Because at, at a certain point, again, not to be horribly rude to D'Angelo Russell or... Uh, you know, Cam Reddish or Rui Hachimura, Torian Jer- Prince, uh, Christian Wood. These guys, they haven't Jackson Hayes. That's the team that everyone has assembled and was like, oh, this is going to be so good. Like, okay, how about you go get guys who know a role, mm-hmm. know how to play to their strengths? 
Yeah. And that's where I think what I mean, like when you talk about guys who don't come from a winning background, a lot of players in the league, like the entire Detroit Pistons team, nobody knows what they're going to be as a player. So they right. all think even when they get 25, 26 still that they're going to be the next big thing that it's only a matter of them getting an opportunity. And, and so every time they go out there, they try to prove that, that they're the, as mm-hmm. opposed to playing good team basketball. Yeah. Lakers are littered with those players. And yeah. so LeBron can be mad, but like somebody had a say in who built this roster. And I, I assume he was in the room for some of it, at least a little bit of it. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I mean, and that's ultimately the thing is you talk about surrounding with shooters. Okay. D'Angelo Russell, 41.7% from three on six attempts a game. It's a good shooter. LeBron shooting 39.7% this year. Yeah. He's good. Man. Wild. It's uh, crazy what he's doing it. it d- 39. Th- that game the other night, I know I wasn't here, but the, the, we didn't have a show. I guess it was Saturday night. That Warriors Lakers game where LeBron's playing 48 minutes and having 36 and 20 and a bunch of us. <laughs> oh my God. That is a better stat line than 99.9% of the players in the NBA will ever put up. And he's doing it at 39 years old. Right now, he's averaging <laughs> 24.9 points, 7.7 assists, 7.5 rebounds. <laughs> he's still a genius. He's still 52% from the field. Yeah, there is no like, oh, he's in the All Star game because he's LeBron. No, he's in the All Star game because he's still great. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, he is. If the Lakers were better, he'd be an MVP candidate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rui Hachimura, thirty nine percent, just three attempts a game though. Uh, Torian Prince, thirty eight and a half percent, five uh, five attempts a game, and then Austin Reeves, thirty four percent on four point six. Yeah, uh, his his shooting percentages have dipped quite a bit, but there's enough there shooting wise where you're going, okay, you you you're okay with this, you like this, but. D'Angelo Russell, that's the guy. Wow. Well, like that's 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 gonna be your third best player, ostensibly. He, they like tried, just... they tried really, really hard to trade him. Yeah, I, like I had that thing, like, hey, this is about to happen. We're coming on the show. I'm like, hey, this is about to happen. Yeah. Where D'Angelo Russell uh with um Hood Shafino and a first round pick and a pick swap yeah. is being sent to Atlanta for DeJounte Murray. That was like super super close to happening a couple yeah. of weeks ago and uh, even that trade kyle what that's the same thing like that's it's the same you're bringing in another guy like that yep and another guy who wants to dribble the air out of the ball another guy that wants to like do a bunch of me 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 stuff and yeah is he good sure he's good i don't know if he he might be better than deanna Jolo russell he plays better defense but at the same time what are, what are you doing? Like the, the entire concept of what you're doing is wrong. You're not going out right. and getting players that have had success, putting them in a better position and having them succeed for you. Yeah. As a, And then you as a whole succeeding. That's not what the Lakers are doing. It's really funny because we sit here and we talk about Harrison Barnes a lot. Harrison Barnes would be a great fit for the Lakers. Yeah. Like that's the kind of player they need. Who's going to say, yeah, I could probably do more, but, I can help the team in X, Y, and, and Z way. Yep. And and that's what, again, Harrison Barnes, maybe not this year, but the last, you know, three, four years, and particularly last year. I can't say really valuable player who's not going to be an all-star and he's not going to put up huge numbers, but man, he helps your team. And yeah, the Lakers just don't have that. And I'm sure that's a frustration for LeBron because I'm sure he talks to these guys when they come in or before they come in and he goes, hey, here's what I here's what we need from you. Here's what I'm thinking for your role. And they're like, yeah, 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 I can't wait, can't wait. And then they get out there and don't necessarily do the things they need to do to impact winning. They shook their head and didn't listen. I mean, and that's, again, that's a lot of the players that they brought in. It, yeah. You know, like I, I kicked, uh, I went and did like deep background on Christian Wood. Mm-hmm. Cause let's be honest, like Christian Wood on paper every year of his career, except for this year would look so perfect next to Demonis Sabonis. Yeah. And, everyone that i talked to within you know that that was in the know in -hmm. dallas was like yeah i mean he's not a bad kid you know he shows up late here and there and and that's not the problem the problem is he doesn't make winning plays Mm -hmm. and what does that mean like he goes out there and he averages 18 and 10 like yeah but he gives up 22 and 13 sure yeah so every time like Mm -hmm. it's like and and the the mistakes are so egregious and the forced plays and like all of these things that he does, they don't make sense and they don't lead to winning. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to find as as much as you need talent. You also need to find players that when you're accumulating talent that have that, that idea behind them that I am going to fill in a role 
as best I can. And yeah. whether that's a star role or being a, a star in my role, whatever it is, I got to do that. And that's mm -hmm. where I think the Kings have struck gold with guys like, like Malik Monk yeah. who, who had bounced around everywhere. And you put him in the perfect situation for him to succeed. And he yeah. found success. Yeah. Right. So what Malik Monk is today, that's not what Malik Monk was the first five years of his career. Right. And, you know, Malik can say, well, I'm going to take my talents and go wherever if that's what happens at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. But he should also realize that the reason why he's as good as he is right now and he's up for all that money was because he was put in a perfect situation by a perfect coach at the time for him. Yeah. And he didn't cry about coming off the bench. No. And he just but, went and accepted a role. Exactly. And that's what you need to do. You need to find guys that are willing to accept roles that are willing to play what it is you need them, you know, whatever it is that your team needs. And I think that's kind of the fun thing about watching the the Kings mold mm -hmm. Keegan Murray mm -hmm. because they're molding him into the player that they need. And he's sitting sure. there as a sponge and just like, yes, whatever it is you want me to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. Like, oh, you need me to be the best on ball defender, statistically speaking, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in, in isolation, all of a sudden, that's what he was. Mm -hmm. Like the stat came out yesterday. He's holding guys to like 14% or Jeez. something in isolation situations in 43 attempts this year. Like what he's doing, it, it it's because they're bought into a system where I don't think they're bought in. Like you're LeBron James and Anthony Davis and a bunch of randos. And I, I think everybody feels that, mm -hmm. that you're all just pieces that Danny yeah. Ainge is going to trade for at some point and give up a better player for. <laughs> that's all you are. Well, and that's, that's the, that's where last year they made all these moves at the deadline and they, they figured it out and, and everything was great. But I don't know if that's if that's necessarily there for them this year. You think that every year, and someone always bills out that's the Lakers. Good, you know, it's, it's a good point. But right now, they're they're so funny. They haven't had a winning streak longer than three, and they haven't had a losing streak longer than four. Okay, so like the Kings. Yeah, except, except for the Kings had worse. the six. Yeah, yeah. They go three wins in a row, loss win, four losses in a row, win loss win, four losses, two wins, two losses, two wins, a loss. Mm -hmm. Trade off win and loss. One two in a row. Okay, get rolling. Lose two in a row. Kyle, like they're, they're just, a five hundred team. Just, they're just they're they're. Eh. No, that's what they are. They're, they're a five hundred team. Yeah, they're a five hundred team. Getting this kind of season from LeBron and getting forty six games of Anthony Davis. Yeah, and and again, that's just the not guy's super averaging promising. If you're LA, AD's at twenty five and twelve, and he's averaging two point three blocks and a steal and three point <laughs> seven assists, and he's you know, like he's a really really good player, but. The, and the fact that this team very well, is it tomorrow? All-Stars are announced tomorrow. They're, yeah, Thursday. They're, they're likely getting to Oh, it's All -Stars. Wednesday. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we made it. In my head, it's been Tuesday all day. No, tomorrow's That's your favorite a huge day of the week. For me. That's a huge win for me. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah, the Lakers currently the nine seed tied with the Jazz and, and way back at the Pelicans. Yeah. I, it just... You're tied with the Jazz. Oof. Does that mean Danny Ainge doesn't just give you a team this year? Just wondering. Just oh, asking. Might. Just asking for. He a might just just swap that out. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Tough. Tough look. Yeah. Although I, I look, <laughs> if anybody is gonna media drama their way through this and media drama their way into a more competitive team, it's LeBron. Of course. And I kind of respect it. Like the fact that he still wants to win that badly after all the success he's had in the league. I definitely respect it. all he does is win. And, and like, look, you're wasting one of his last few seasons. Mm. I mean, we think granted, <laughs> I thought that's seven years ago. So yeah. yeah, there's that, there's that tweet from like 2015 uh, as a Warriors fan being like LeBron's 30, this stuff won't, it didn't say stuff, but this stuff won't go on for much longer. And now <laughs> it's 2024 and he's still <laughs> I'll tell you though, what's going to happen is he's going to retire. He's going to retire at like 43 or 44. I, I don't know. Maybe around then. Maybe 42, maybe 41. Yeah. Then like, is he going to go out like Tom Brady where he just has a great year? I mean, I mean, great relative. Probably has a, has a great year and is like, ah, all right, I'm done now. Probably. And then what we're going to see though, Kyle, is he's going to like show up at the ESPYs or something. He's going to have like a cane. He's going to be all gray. He's getting like his beard will be white and you'd be like, what happened? He's like, I left it all out there. <laughs> Everything I had, I gave to the game like thousand percent. And you can see him like rehearsing the speech again and again. Oh, in my God. As he dyes his beard. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh, he, he is great. 
Yeah. 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 Um, you see Draymond letting the gray come into his beard. Like, oh yeah, now now he's wise. Watch out. You don't let the gray come in. The gray just happens, yeah. Kyle. I mean, like, you could you could try and color it out. That's what, dude, that's scary. Because I don't have any hair on my head. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, so I don't get like the grays coming in there. But dude, up the sideburns. And then like there's a spot on my chin that when the hair starts to really grow, it's just white. There's just no color there. Yeah. Like, oh, well, oh boy. Kyle, like the one advantage that LeBron has is that, you know, there's like a, he, he can wash that gray white right out of his you know beard, right? Because there are like colors that match when you're, yeah, yeah. when you're a ginger, there ain't no washing. Yeah. You've like, got nothing done. There's no way to do it. There's you no way no chance. like, no, you just, it, it's, it's turning white. It lo- and I just shaved it down, but like when it's long, it's white and I'm looking more and more like Santa Claus and there's nothing you can I do kinda, without it I looking like I kind of want someone's... nothing more than for you to let, let it, let the beard grow in though. No, I, I don't think I can do it, Kyle. Is it I, like, right, yeah, you know, yeah. like people are going to know how old I am. That's fine. Well, okay. Uh, I, I try That's to, a good point. That's one of your favorite things is making tr- people think that you're 30. Well, I don't try to make people think they think what they think. I'm just not telling them how old I am. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit yesterday with Damien in the handoff about all-star voting. I still think that De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis are are going to get in. There's, it sounds like some skepticism that only one is going to get in, or is that just like a like, yeah, hey, it's Sacramento, of course, only one of them is going to get in, even though both got in last year. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't have anything solid yet, but sure, you know, there are there might be some murmurs that one or the other is getting in, and um, and I I think one of the problems that you have too is who's going to be the head coach, right? So. Mm. that that will actually play in because oh, someone always gets hurt right there's always yeah, an injury yeah. replacement and De'Aaron Fox last year deserved to be an all-star he didn't get in right and then he got in as a injury replacement which right. which doesn't feel as good as like literally no. the NBA what they do they I believe what they do is they send a jersey to you like in a really super fancy box that's like <laughs> your all-star like hey you've made it right and okay. you open up like this beautiful box and inside is your jersey Okay. Right. And it might even just be a commemorative jersey that you mm-hmm. leave in that box that you aren't supposed to go and, right. and wear for the game, right. or whatever. Um, and not being able to go through all of that and get all like that's part of the experience that Fox didn't get last year. So I would hope that Fox does make it because I mean he's averaging over 27 points a game. He's um, you know, he's he's definitely like played his way into this situation. I agree. And you know, you put his stats up against Steph Curry mm-hmm. stats are better. Mm-hmm. Like you put his stats up against a lot of guys and he's better, but what happens at the end? Who knows? My problem is that what if it, it's Minnesota and what if uh, Carl Anthony towns or Gobert don't get in and Sabonis also doesn't get in, but then you need an injury replacement. The head coach for the team that will coach the game usually gets to make the decision on who the replacement is. Oh, interesting. I think, I don't think it's Adam silver. I think it's a coach that gets to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be a problem because like, I I think the path for Sabonis to get in, if he doesn't get in Mm -hmm. is more difficult than it is for Fox. I think if I was, I think if I was Domas in this situation and I didn't get named to the all-star team now, granted, I know it's in Indiana and that's where he really came into his own as an NBA player. I I, I get all yeah. that. But I also think for me personally, if I was in that spot, I don't know if I'd want to go. Because look, you're you're an injury replacement. So okay, you don't get everything you just talked about, right? The 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 commemorative yeah. jersey. I mean, you do but, get that but, stuff, but you don't get it in the same way. It's not like the big yeah, reveal type right, thing. Right. It's just like you get a I'm sure it's like a phone call, or maybe Mike Brown calls him in and goes, Hey. You're going to Indiana. Yeah. You know, okay, great. But now, you know, if you're an injury replacement, you're going, you've, you've gone from, okay, well, I get the all-star break off to, mm-hmm. okay, now I've got to go to Indiana. <laughs> I've got to hang out in Indiana for it's, a few days. Instead of going take, away to, to take tropics. Part in, oh, right, to take part in all this stuff. And then you're an injury reserve center in the all-star game. Yeah. You're going to play four minutes. You're just gonna sit there. 
I'd way rather go on vacation to somewhere I would like to go. I and even I think straw poll. Would you rather go to pick a Hawaii? Yeah, I would tell you. Days I think or Indiana. De'Aaron Fox would rather just sit at home and relax and not be there. Like uh, honestly, that's kind of been his mo throughout his career. Like, yeah, I'm gonna just go. I mean, we saw what happened last. Hang year. out with play, his like, family, play video games, and yeah, vibe. like like yeah. recover and get yeah. ready for the second half of the season. Like regain your focus, spend quality time with your little guy and quality mm-hmm. time with your wife and just reset. That's what I think. So a lot of these guys just take off, man. They like, they leave, like if the all-star game was tomorrow, they're leaving straight from the Bahamas and uh, straight to the Th- Bahamas. Right. Or, Thousand percent. Oh yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Like, especially with them being in Miami, they'd be like, heck, heck yeah. Get me out of here. Yeah. I'm just right. I'm flying straight out of Miami. Oh yeah. Totally. Go to the keys for a weekend. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know where the Kings, the last game of the, uh, is the, it Indiana. Is that where they are? Well, if you're in Indiana, then you just stay there. Is it Indiana? I don't think you want to just stay in Indiana, especially, I think, with the weather, the way it's going to be. Um, the Kings have the All-Star break starts on the fourth. No, they're at Denver. Oh, Denver. No, but Denver's a good place to be because that's a... That's a hub. It is a hub. You can get just about anywhere from Denver. You could be Costa Rica in like three hours, maybe four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... I um. In fact, honestly, you're in Phoenix on Tuesday. Maybe like, hey, Mike, my knee's a little sore. I'm not playing tomorrow. I'm joking. They're not going to do that. Boy, isn't that rough? They got a back to back. They go. Oh, they, they, they Sunday, oof. Sunday at OKC, Tuesday at Phoenix, Wednesday at Denver. It starts a game before that. You're at home against Denver, then OKC, then Phoenix, then Denver again. Oh, that's rough. That's brutal. Man. Yeah, that's a, a tough one. You played Denver a bunch. Played Denver three times. You you got him again coming right out of the break. Oh my god! And then and then yeah, you go San Antonio at Clippers, home heat at Denver at Minnesota. Oh oh, I don't learn a lot about the Kings in that stretch. <laughs> we always say you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna learn a lot. Yeah, that's my that's my go to. That goes group of tough games. Mm-hmm. Let's see how this. Let's see how this team does in those games. Yeah, because that's how time works. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm with you though, man. And if, and honestly, if I'm okay, let's say, let's say you're right. Let's say De'Aaron's like, man, I'd rather stay home, but I got this. I gotta go, so I'll go. If he gets in, if I, so again, let's let's do the Kyle Madsen version of this. Yep. If I get in the game, I'm going balls to the wall. I am playing my ass off for every second I'm on the court. I'm going to make my mark on that game. If I'm going to have to be out there, if I'm going to have to go through all the rigmarole of being an all-star and then be an afterthought in the game, at least when I'm in the game, I'm going to make sure that people know I'm there. I'm playing defense. I'm getting in jerseys. I'm breaking guys down off the dribble. I'm (laughs) throwing down dunks. Setting big screens. Oh, big time. Big time. <laughs> Hard fouls going oh, to the rim. Fouls, you are not going to lay up on me, bro. It's the all-star game. I got fouls to give. Dude, I, I'd be the worst. They'd never want me back. Yeah. I, I, You know, I get what De'Aaron did last year. He was like, yeah, I don't really want to be here. Like, we're, hey, we're dude, in we're Utah, 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 right? Yeah. Ugh. We're in Utah, right? Ugh. Like, what are we doing here? How yeah, did I get know, stuck here in Utah? Right. Right. And it's a, and it's ultimately a popularity contest. And that's why, that's why I don't have it in me to get outraged if one of De'Aaron or, 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 or Demonis Sabonis don't make the all star team. Yeah. I don't have it. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't have that in my bones to care that much because it, it is a popularity contest. Like Steph Curry, like that, that's just, that's, that's what it is. And that's how it's always been. And so, at least in, in my recollection of the all star game, that's how it's always been. And so that's fine. That's what the game is. It's a showcase and the fans watch and it's a silly game and they 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 throw their alley oops and they shoot a million threes and okay, good, awesome. But that's why that's why I will accept that for what it is. If Demonis Sabonis or De'Aaron Fox are not all-stars, I'm not going to be pounding the table saying the NBA is messing up and they don't know what it is. Like, no, man, they'll get their all NBAs, which is what actually matters, and they'll be in the postseason. And that's that's what I ultimately care about. Okay. No, I, I get that. It, my only thing, especially for Domas, um, like Fox, we'll see how Fox's career materializes from here on out. Right. 
like it's i think a lot of what how fox's legacy is going to be remembered is by uh, like how they do in the playoffs like sure I, I think that that's how everybody like in the end a lot of players are judged no, th that is how everybody is judged <laughs> yeah but i think when it comes to sabonis sabonis's route to like the hall of fame is different mm -hmm. it's not the flashy it's not the high scoring guy it's the guy who brought his his hard hat and his lunch pail to work every single day and beat people up and like basically physically willed himself into an all-star bid mm -hmm. i mean into a hall of fame bid sure and to miss out on an all-star game right now and, and potentially because that's the way that if you don't get in at one point after you've been in mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't get another opportunity opportunity to get back in mm -hmm. so i would like to see him get in again and have his fourth all-star because I think I think it will matter. I think it's part of his resume to be in the Hall of Fame down the road. I, maybe a little bit, but not if he's stacking up all NBAs in the process. Maybe. And if he winds up averaging, you know, over over this next over this ten year stretch, if he's averaging eighteen, twelve, and nine, yeah, and the Kings go to the playoffs every year. But I, here would be my argument that like there's no guarantee he's an All NBA player either. Because what if they? Okay, so Embiid might be out, so that would mm -hmm. that could open a door, right, mm -hmm. for for Domas. But if Anthony Davis is going to play eighty games, it becomes a popularity contest in some sense. People are like, "Well, look at how many games AD played." It's like, "Well, but his team was horrible." Right? It's like it doesn't matter. He's AD, and look at what he did. And so I think he would get in over Domas. Where last year you looked at him, and you're like, "Hey, AD only played fifty six games. I'm not going to mm -hmm. vote for him." Yeah, I guess. So that would be my concern. Yeah, but like you said, it's all that the way you erase a lot of that. Uh, I, I guess the way you get into the popularity contest is you go win in the playoffs. Yeah, you stake your claim in a different right. way. That's it. That's how it has to go. All right. Uh, so maybe not not really trade rumors, but a couple of interesting names from the athletic that you and I have not talked about as potential fits for the Kings. Okay. And I want to talk about those next on the Insiders all right. on ESPN 1320. Um, yeah, it's, I, I haven't looked, it's very possible that Adam Silver makes the injury replacement, but I remember one year where I swear it wasn't Adam Silver. I, I want to say it was Greg Popovich who made the decision. So maybe that has changed. Um, I don't know. I did not watch the Bobby Marks video on the Kings trade scenarios, but, uh, rich dot Ripley at odyssey.com who, hell if, yeah. If you would like to sponsor the insiders, uh, he did watch it and uh, told me that uh, like it's it's worth watching. I, I I think some of his premise is that the Kings, because they're a running back team, um, like they have to be cautious about upsetting the the delicate balance of everything, and uh, that maybe an off season trade is better for them, and. I, I don't fully disagree with that, but the the thing is with trades is you don't always get to choose when you make a big trade. Sometimes a big trade happens and it's it's you have to make a trade when a guy becomes available and that player may not be available again. So, you know, again, we saw the Kings go in on the Pascal Siakam thing. Pascal Siakam likely isn't going to be available via trade again. And so you didn't make the deal. Someone else did. And like going back and getting that player again is going to be virtually impossible. So it just depends on how much you value the player and all that stuff. But yeah, it's complicated. And I, I did like while we were building up to the show, I did do a trade scenario where the Kings could conceivably trade for a Kyle Kuzma without giving up Herder or Barnes. It would take a like a four for one or a four for two. And uh require it would be complicated but not undoable and then you know picks depends on what what it is that the uh the washington wizards are looking to do i'm still waiting for the play where Embiid got hurt the game is on hey how about jonathan kaminga yeah, he's playing well. Figuring it out. No, he's playing well. It's crazy what happens when you empower your young players to play. I totally agree. Bananas. 
Um, where am I? Where am I at? Let's send that. I think also when you create a space for him to be the player that he yes. is. Yes. Tailoring your system to your talent. Because that was not what they were doing before. Correct. Yeah. Uh, we are 15 seconds until the legal identification of our radio station. Oh, okay. I like Panic Kyle better. We have a, well, we have a caller. <laughs> oh, so party on. Here we go. Our numero dos. I'm Kyle. That's James. We're taking you up to noon. Then we will hand it off to D'Lo and KC. I want to talk about real quick. What you looked worried? No. Okay. I'm good. Okay. That was. We're on the air. I know. We definitely know. That's all for that sure. matters, Kyle. The way the way your face looked just now, though, I thought something bad happened. Nope. Whew. All right. We're a okay. We've been uh, talking a little bit about the All Star game. We talked to Kings Heat, of course, the Kings and Heat. Uh, face off tonight. The Kings looking to make it five consecutive victories, looking to get to a season high 10 games over 500. Mm. How important do you think that is? 10 games is big. Yeah. Because once you get to 10, it's you've sort of secured yourself and who you, you should be. Yeah. Like you're on a, on a path where you're a 45 to 52 win team. Mm -hmm. Like right there, it depends whether you pick up, you, you know, you start making some moves and stuff, but you're on, you're on a specific path. And when the, the late season comes and a bunch of teams cash it in the final 25, mm -hmm. you are not one of those teams, especially when we get this close to the all-star break, when you're like, you see where this thing's heading. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of teams go, okay, we're good. We know we're, who we are and we're going to play for, for draft lottery, even though it's a bad draft right. uh, or suspect draft. I will see how it all works out in the end. But um, yeah, I, I think 10 is big. Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree with that. Let's put a pin in that and discuss that a little bit more later on. We've got Frank in Elk Grove. We were talking about Demonis Sabonis making or not making the all-star team. Frank had a question. Frank, what's going on, man? Hey, uh, I'm not sure if James knows the answer to this, but I was just thinking about Sabonis contract when it was announced, right? And uh, I, isn't there like an incentive in there for him to make the All Star in the NBA teams, like two point five million dollars or something? So if, if he doesn't make it, doesn't that go from a likely incentive because he made it last year to an unlikely incentive, which means that the Kings will carry a lower cap hit into the off season? Uh, that was pretty much my question. So I'll take the answer off the line. Thanks, Frank. Yeah. So his incentives, um, he gets one point three million for an All Star bid, and then. He, I believe his other is an unlikely incentive, which is the all NBA, which is, uh, he gets another 1.3. So he can get $2.6 million, but, um, the all-star incentive for him, because he had, he is a three-time all-star has become a likely incentive. So it does count against the cap. Uh, and then the unlikely incentive, either way they count against the cap, but in different ways. So like they count at the end of the year, but they don't count at the beginning of the year. So that unlikely, you're probably right. The the unlikely, uh, I still believe, is an unlikely incentive uh, if he if he makes uh, for him to make the All NBA team because it's only 15 players. So even if you've made it a couple of times, I still think it's an unlikely incentive. All right. Yeah, I, I'll I can do some more uh, research on it, but um, you know, I I don't know that they're all likely. Like, well, I don't know, maybe. And again, this goes back to what I and now granted, if you negotiate a, a an, an all star incentive into your contract, that's your that's your MO. But you're banking on fan voting and then players and coaches and all these other all these other aspects that go into it. I don't I just wouldn't I wouldn't base my my uh, my potential pay on the whims of people on Twitter. That's all. No, <laughs> that's my that's my take. Yeah. Um, I was perusing the athletic today, which I tend to do. I read no big deal. And 
a couple of names I want to throw at you. Yep. As as possible fits for the Kings. All right. How do you feel about Daniel Gafford starting center for the Wizards? Oh, I've always liked Daniel Gafford. Uh, when Daniel Gafford was coming out in the draft, he's a player that I thought, hey, if you could get him in the late first, early second, uh, I like him. Mm -hmm. He, for the first couple of years of his career, was just a stick figure. Really, his um, body transformation reminds me a lot of Willie Cauley-Stein. Mm. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein quietly became like a bean pole. Mm -hmm. to a guy who actually started to thicken up not upper body he was still smaller upper body but uh like his lower he, he was able to build his uh his legs and yeah you know it, he was able to become more of a like sturdy player yeah gafford has developed and he is a shop locker and if you were looking for somebody who's going to be you know you're going to be able to keep around for a few years mm -hmm. he's a guy that like if you're looking at young javel mcgee type stuff yeah, I, I think Gafford kind of fits into that mold right there. I like Gafford. This year, he's 10.8 points, 7.8 boards, a 1.6 assists, averaging more than two blocks a game. Yeah. Would you do a heavily protected first Davion Mitchell and Chris Duarte? No. I don't think. Because Would you I, do Mitchell and Duarte? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, maybe. I, I'd like to see the contract that he's on um because that's usually like one of the determining factors for me so without having his i think contract, he's got two years left yeah I'll, and 12 million a year okay um you know i i think some of the issues that you have is number one you're talking about a player who's never played for a good team mm -hmm. um like for the most part in his career he's been on on a bad you know well his whole career he he's been on a bad uh Wizards team. He is an Arkansas guy, which is interesting. Uh, he's got two years after this one, 13.3 and then 14.3. Yeah, see, that's a lot for me. Okay. Like, to be honest, okay. I, like, I, I don't mind him. And if it was part of a, not at that price, a bigger deal, like, but I'd want to know why I'm doing it. Right. So, and, and I do think he can play. And I, I just don't know. You know, he's not a guy who he, he doesn't even shoot threes. Like, he has never attempted a three in the NBA. He has one attempt. He has one, oh, he has one? one attempt in the 2021-22 season, and he missed it. Yes. So one total. So for me, like this is also this this also feeds into my whole thing about Domas needing to shoot more threes. It gives him more options about who can play next to him. No, Anyways, totally. Uh, totally. But like to pay a guy 13, 14 million over the next couple of years, I didn't know his contract was that high. Mm -hmm. Um, that's basically like Rashawn Holmes cash. That's that's a good chunk of change for a guy who might play 15 or 13 minutes a night behind Demona Sabonis. Sure. If he can play alongside Sabonis. That, that would be th so that's that that was the impetus behind this for me. And yeah. that's where the, the discussion comes in for me because you're right. Uh, it's a very obvious no if you're expecting him to be the JaVale McGee Alex Len mold, right? Yeah. But if you believe that Hey, you can get a shot blocking center next to Demonis Sabonis, and offensively, you're gonna have to change some things around. And maybe it does mean Domas hanging out on the perimeter a little more and shooting some threes. Mm -hmm. Then so be it for me. Okay, that's but but uh, to your point, um, I don't I, I don't I, is changing everything they're doing offensively right now really the move. Yeah. So last year we had, I mean, last week we had Jerry Reynolds on and it, Jerry Reynolds brought up a name that's like in the same sort of vein. And he brought up Jalen Smith and is like, Hey, look, you know, Indiana just made a move for Siakam. They're super crowded now with I, mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah Jackson there with Obi top in there. Like, Hey, why don't you look at that as a potential player? And he makes more sense. Uh, 10.5, 5.6 uh, rebounds, only 0.6 blocks. But the key to him is he's shooting 46.9% from three. Um, now he is getting the benefit of being fed by by Tyrese Halliburton. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, because he's a career three, 33.1% uh, three point shooter. Mm -hmm. But Jalen Smith is kind of in that same type of, you know, long athletic guy that might be able to come in and, and do a little bit of damage defensively, but also hit a three. Yeah. I think he could steal minutes alongside Domas, where I don't think that's the case with, uh, with Gafford. All right. Uh, the second, uh, do we have time? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to get be you quick one more then. here. I'm going to get you one more here. Uh, Quentin Grimes for the Knicks. No, I, I mean, like, yeah, Quentin uh, Grimes is a bucket, but I put him in the same vein as like Malik Monk. If you're making that move, it's because you're planning for the future. Oh, see, I, I, Man, I I think defensively, 
Yeah. What he brings is is awesome, and his offense has fallen off a lot this year. Um, he's only shooting 36.3% from three. Uh, he was up around 38, I think, last year. He might have been more than 38 last year. But I just think defensively, I think he could be what you thought you were getting with Chris Duarte. Okay. I just... I, I, I I like that idea way more than I like the the Gafford idea. Okay, it's just, but again, I don't know how eager the Knicks are to move on from him, and I don't. Yeah. I'm not giving up like major assets if they're going to give him away for next to free. Then great, but I don't know how much they'd be willing to do that. I think it's cost prohibitive. Uh, that's the the problem that you're going to have with Grimes is that I think that the Knicks believe he's worth a lot more than, and, and I think sure. there are certain teams out there that really like what he what he brings. He's only mm-hmm. at. 2.4 million this year and 4.3 next year, mm-hmm. uh, which are both team options. So like super, super affordable. And if he's a guy that grows into a much bigger role, then sure. Um, and you're going to have, you're going to bird rights to him. You're going to have like restricted free agent and all that. Mm-hmm. So he's a guy that I would definitely like consider. Yeah. But if they're going to want like an unprotected first for him. Well, and that's what I think like sort of the buzz out there is if the Knicks are going to get rid of him, they're trying to, what they're trying to do is stockpile as many picks. Sure. So when they go to add that next humongous piece that they think that they'll add this summer, Mm -hmm. that they've got like an arsenal to do it. And they already have a a, a war chest. They want more. Hmm. They want a more chest. A more chest. (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry. That was stupid. It's okay. Terrible. Uh, We'll talk more trade stuff. We got a Kyle Kuzma thing out of the athletic as well from David Aldridge and Josh Robbins Mm. on Robbins offered an idea on what the Kings could give up for Kyle Kuzma. Didn't necessarily love it, No, but we'll, uh, we'll dive into that. We'll also dive back in to this Kings heat matchup tonight down in Miami. All of that's coming up in the final. What do we got? Math 47 minutes on the insiders. CSPN 1320. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've watched Jalen Smith play enough that I'm just not convinced that that he is a guy that is, like, unquestionably a rotational player. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a possibility for him to be good. And I think he would probably play better alongside a guy like Savonis. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not convinced that I mean he's still a little bit sloppy as a player. You know, he he hasn't refined his game to a point where you're like, okay, that's a that's a rotational player on a good team. Who's that? Uh, Jalen Smith. Mm. The Grimes thing is interesting. I mean, certainly, if you had to make a move where you traded Kevin Herter, then, yeah, go ahead and go out and get Grimes. That would be, like, a second move, which I don't know how easy that would be if you made a first move. Yeah. Would you rather trade for Kyle Kuzma or Jimmy Butler? Man, that's so tough. We can talk about this on the air too. Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, I I hate saying this. I would trade for Kuzma, and it's because Jimmy Butler's 34 years old and is owed, what do we say, like a lot. 46, 48, 50. It's like a max player. Well, that he is a max player, but the problem is with a max player is it, it takes, you got to match salaries to to make a deal or come within 25% and coming within 25% of, I mean, you got to come up with almost 40 million bucks in salary. (laughs) So Harrison's gone, uh, in, in this scenario, Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Herter's gone. Um, Davion Mitchell, you, you can't even really play on the peripheral with like Davion and, like you're probably skipping straight to Trey Lyles at his $8 million salary. And, you know, you might even have to like pull out Lyles and, and put like Malik Monk into that. So what are you doing? But like, I'm just saying to get to the salary. (laughs) So in this scenario, you're resetting your roster because the Knicks, I mean, the the heat aren't going to drop five players so they can make a trade. Yeah. Yeah. 
th th that's just not going to happen. Right. So I, I don't know, like, like dealing. Well, maybe they would, maybe they'd be like, okay, we don't need to be this team anymore or we're not going to be this team. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. I'd rather have Kuzma. Yeah. Okay. For all the reasons you just laid out. It's like a layup to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Kuzma thing is just like, he's so affordable. Yeah, no, that's it. And he, he's affordable money wise. He's going to cost less to pry away from, from Washington than yep. Butler would be Yeah, from Miami. Like everything is, is Butler like in a vacuum better? Oh yeah. Sure, he's, he's a better but... player. And if you just had Jimmy Butler on your team, you have a better chance of winning yeah, today. No doubt. But the problem is it in order to get him. Okay. All right, I'm Kyle. That's James. Kings taking on the heat of Miami. And let me tell you, that Miami heat is made worse by the humidity. The humidity is so bad. I went to, I know it's not Miami, but I went to Key West recently. Yeah. Not to brag. And it was awful. Man, I've been to like Fort Lauderdale and like Stewart, Florida, above that, and in Orlando. And man, if you haven't been there, if you haven't been like for people who are like California people, right? Mm -hmm. It's so like the humidity is so bad that you are drenched in sweat every single moment of the day. Uh, no matter what, no matter what you're doing, like you're just sitting there, you're, you're drenched in sweat. I this, sat outside for an hour doing sea glass art and had to go inside shower and change before going out. Yes. Then the problem is you walk into any store and in order to keep the moisture and mildew out, they have their air conditioners cranked to like 60. Yeah. So you're covered in sweat. You walk in, you instantly have the chills and you're freezing. Yes. It is absolutely miserable. It's awful. There are so many better places in the world to go to. Than that's what, that's what, there. dude, when, when I was down there and I've been to, I've been to a couple of different places in, in Florida a couple of times. Don't judge and when I'm down there, it's like, why do people want to play sports here? I don't, I'm not built for this. But you know what? <laughs> De'Aaron Fox will tell you, he, he loves the humidity right, of, but Houston, he's a, right, of Houston. Right. Cause of Houston from there. Yeah. Way more than he likes a California dry heat. Oh man. I'll take the California dry heat all day long. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it's hot. Like, yeah, it, it gets super hot where you walk outside and you're like, Oh, it hits you in the face. You're like, I, I do not want to be outside anymore, especially if you're like walking on blacktop, but come on now. I, I, lived, I, would... I lived in Arizona for a couple of years and yeah, I will dry. say, so I get the dry heat aspect of like California mm -hmm. because up here we might get a week of a uh, one thirteen, one fifteen. In Arizona, it's like, and again, that's in a really bad year where it's oh, like, yeah. dude, it is. But like 107, 108. In Arizona, it is just like three months of highs of 110 and above. And I don't care at that point that the heat's dry. Yeah. It I, sucks, dude. Dude, I talked to my brother. When, my brother <laughs> lived awful. in Arizona. I talked to him at like 11 o'clock at night one night. Mm -hmm. And it was still 109. At 11 o'clock at night. Like it, it just doesn't cool off. You're, it's just absolutely miserable. Brutal. Like I, I don't even want to be there. Brutal. All right. Let's get some Kings to get some Kings to a keys victory. Let's get some keys to a Kings victory tonight in Miami is the take on the heat with a four thirty tip. James, what is your first key for the Sacramento Kings? Oh my goodness. My first key. Uh, oh my goodness. You caught me. Uh, <laughs> no, win the trip, win it. Like that's it. Win the trip. You start 3 and 0. You're on a 7 game road trip. You win this game, you come back 500 or better. You've already guaranteed you come back you're better than 500. You've already guaranteed a winning oh, on the trip. You've already won, yeah. guaranteed a winning trip and that's actually a big deal. Like if you can do do this, I, it's it's a big momentum builder going forward and mm -hmm. to keep it rolling to get to 5 game win streak at the right time to start getting that separation where some mm -hmm. teams are struggling. It's a huge moment for the Kings. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, 
I'm right there. I'm right there with you. Moment in a in a season that's been as up and down as this one, you need to find an up and ride it for a while. Yeah. And and I think you can do that tonight. Key number one for me is you got to bring the dogs. Like you thought Memphis was was tough because of how they played. I know the heat culture thing is a is a bit now, but with Eric Spolstra and with Jimmy Butler and with Pat Riley and the foundation and the culture that they've built, they're going to bring it. Mm -hmm. And they do not want to get to eight losses in a row. As bad as the Kings want to get to five wins in a row, the Heat do not want to get to eight losses in a row. That'd be very embarrassing for them. I think you're going to get their very best punch tonight. And they they have some dogs and you got to bring your own. Yeah. And you know what, Kyle, I'll add to that. If you're the Kings, the the Heat play the Wizards at they go they fly to Washington Washington for their next game. Mm -hmm. You know that they know that they're going to get a get right game. They can see it. You need to push that off one more game. Mm -hmm. You need to say, okay, you guys know you, you're going to get right next game, yep. but you're not going to get right against us. Yep. yep. So it's a big deal. No doubt. Number two. Don't play down to the level of competition. They've lost seven straight. Don't don't give them life. Yes, yeah, it's a weird one because you think play down to the competition like Memphis, mm -hmm. but also with how the Heat are playing right now. And frankly, the, the Kings are just better than Miami. Yeah. So I, I'm I, I agree with you. When I first saw this one, I was kind of like, eh, but I I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, a team that's lost seven in a row, you can't be the team that breaks the streak. And I think yep. we saw that last year where they the Kings let off the gas against a couple of teams that were really struggling. Wasn't it um like Charlotte had lost eleven in a row and and beat the Kings? Yes. It was something bizarre like that. Yes. You can't be that team this year. No. It well. You can't be that team right now. Right. As, going into going into February, that's not where you want to be. No. As a as a club. Yep. Uh number two for me. <laughs> I changed the turnover thing to like fundamentals, dude. Just do the fundies. Yeah. Don't throw the ball out of bounds. Don't try crazy cross court passes. Don't try no look bounce passes in the lane. Don't try if Miami's going to generate some turnovers on their own, you don't need to give them free ones. And you don't need to let them get out and run. Because offensively, they're not super awesome. And if you let them start getting out and run, get out, getting out in transition, uh, it just makes life a lot easier for a team that's really been struggling. So if you go out and you play clean basketball, you have a way better shot of, of making it eight losses in a row for them. So what you're saying is don't look like you just went out all night long in Miami the night before. Yes. Exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My third key. Uh, show your all NBA. Mm. So bonus beat out Bam for the third uh, team All NBA center spot last year, and he's been the better player. Mm -hmm. Bam brings a lot to the table, but this is another game where he can show mm -hmm. that he is the better player and he is the deserving player when it comes to All NBA and the awards that that come after that. We always talk about like recognition with Sabonis, right? We just talked about it earlier with the whole All Star thing and the popularity contest. Yeah, if you go out and look. What it what do you, what do you have twenty and twenty six and five twenty twenty six and five the other night yeah against Memphis like that's an amazing stat line that's a great stat line you also did it against Memphis against nobody against a depleted Memphis yeah team. yeah yeah and it's interesting you say nobody when Memphis has the reigning defensive player of the year just continues my yeah, yeah continues my my thoughts on Triple J but uh <laughs> but if you go out if you're Sabonis and you go out and you have eighteen. 16 and nine in a win against Bam Adebayo in the heat. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that you go, wow, they had, he had a near triple double. Or he had a triple double and against Bam, like dang. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of game that gets you on the map. He's actually played well against Bam in the past and he gets mm -hmm. Bam in foul trouble mm -hmm. and, and then Bam will get him in foul trouble and then Baltimore <laughs> in foul trouble. It's like, uh, perfect. Yeah. That Perfect. might be something that I remember when I'm hey, going right. through price picks this evening. Fourth key, stay out of foul trouble. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, third key for me, speed them up. The Heat don't like to play fast. They are 29th in pace. They want to get you in the half court and they want to grind you into dust. And if you get out and run on them, I don't think that they have a ton of answers. Yeah, the Kings have really, really pushed the tempo lately and they've mm -hmm. they've tried to get back to who they were of even on a made basket, mm -hmm. getting the ball out of bounds, getting it back in bounds and racing up the court. Yes. And it's something that if you do against this Miami Heat team, I don't know that they can keep up all the time. No, and especially, and even when you get, this is something we talked about a lot earlier in the year is it doesn't even need to be get the ball out of the basket and sprint down the court and get into your offense as quick as possible. 
But it is when you do get into your offense, do it with force. Like do it with purpose. Mm -hmm. You have to move. And I, I think if if you can do that and keep Miami from just getting set in their defense, they're eventually going to figure out what you want to do. And if you make it a little more frenetic, you you speed them up offensively. It messes them up defensively. I think that's one of the one of the big things tonight. Yeah, I think one of the other I would point out to they they just made a trade for Terry Rozier Ooh, fourth and, key and, and Terry Rozier like he loves to play the Kings. Like he, he's hammered the Kings all season long. Like he had the big blow up game early when they beat uh, when Charlotte beat yeah. the Kings. Like this is a player that um, he's still finding his way and how he fits into their mm -hmm. their roster. But when he steps on the court and he looks across and he sees the Kings again, he's gonna be like, "All right, I know. I I feel. I know how to do this. I know where I'm at. I I know uh, what this means. It's go time. No, oh. yanks, yanks. All right. Well, hopefully. Hopefully the Kings are listening right now down in South Beach. Yeah, I think so. Just getting ready for the game. Tapped into Kyle and James on ESPN 1320. There we go. And uh, if they follow these keys and avoid the Miami flu. But of course, that's not something they can do tonight. That has to be <laughs> based on how they prepared yesterday. No, totally. Totally, totally. So, and hey, like Kyle. I said, if they, if they come out flat tonight, I'm not going to come in here tomorrow and lambaste them. I'll get it. Okay. I'll yeah, I, I mean, I think we all have those days, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, there's <laughs> you know what, no, you know what? Hey, you know what? No, I've never had a day like an NBA player can have in Miami. I can confidently say that you've never rolled in here and been like, oh, oh, what what was I thinking? No, not not to this. <laughs> no, not not at that level. Not at all. Not at no. that level. Definitely less Vegas a couple times like that. Well, Kyle, the good thing is it tomorrow we will talk about all of these keys and we'll give away a one hundred dollar gift certificate to Jiffy Lube as part of our uh, Jiffy Lube Fast Break giveaway. And you'll also be put in for a, a Sacramento Kings jersey if if you somehow win. So, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so t uh, tomorrow's player of the game is your last chance to enter for January's jersey giveaway. Oh, so we're so going to give away a jersey one. soon. Yeah, we sure are. Uh, do we even know what jersey we're going to let people choose? Uh, no, we, we do know which, which Jersey I haven't gotten confirmation, which one it is, Oh, but there's a couple of foxes, a Sabonis and a Murray. Ooh. So I got to find out exactly which, which one? one it is, but we'll be giving away that, uh, tomorrow, uh, starting at, uh, at 10 o'clock, we will tell you how to enter to win that. All right. More coming up next on ESPN 1320. Uh... What's going on, everybody? Man, I, a lot of you guys really love Jonathan Isaac. Like you do. And, and I understand, I, I think. But I don't. <laughs> like, like the way that the Sacramento Kings had a season last year where you didn't have any players miss any games is because you went out and you got players who historically don't miss any games. Jonathan Isaac is, he's 26 years old and he's played 176 games in his career. Let me put this in, in a way that maybe you could possibly understand. He's played 176 games in his career, and his career spans. He's he's part of the two, 2017 NBA draft with De'Aaron Fox. He's taken either the pick after or the pick after that. I think he's the, the sixth pick in the 2017 NBA draft. I'll be right back. Okay. He is a sixth overall pick. Just put this in perspective. His 176 games is nine games fewer than Harrison Barnes' game played streak. I, I just like he's played seven years. I, I don't understand. He's been in the league seven years, and uh, like you can love what he does, but even this year, he's played 29 games. He's averaged 14 minutes a game. Uh, why would you want to? Why would you want to spend the money? Because he makes 17.4 million this year and 17.4 million next year for a player who cannot stay on the court under almost any circumstance. So, hey, you guys go ahead. Anyway. I, yeah. 
that he gets brought up all the time, all the time. And, and you know, even people bring up Wendell Carter Jr. Wendell Carter Jr. can't stay on the court either. I like him too, but he's a guy that misses a ton of time. Yeah. Like there's a 50, a 44, a 43, a 54, a 62, a 57, and he's played 21 games this year. Like, if you want to miss games due to injury, you go out and get injury-prone players. It's that simple. You can't think that you're going to be able to fix somebody. Shout out to uh, Ant-Man, who picked up a $40,000 fine from the league for talking about the game officials. Um, Jalen Dern out of Detroit. How about Jalen Dern? Yeah. If you can get Jalen Dern, go get Jalen Dern. He's, he's super young, super, super, super young. They're not giving up on Jalen Dern. Yeah. They're not, they're not doing that. Like I, I try to provide like some honesty and some, like, I I try to like help you. Like there are players that you can go get and players that you can't go get. So I try to play within the re- the realm of what is potentially feasible ever. Yeah. Hmm. we're back skirt oh my bad <laughs> we both did the same thing at the same <laughs> <No>. time <laughs> uh that's funny my brain is just not working this week man yeah yeah the midnight sunday bedtime is throwing me off i started oh jeez here we go Here's a good question from Dr. David. Yeah. In the chatty house, youtube.com slash ESPN 1320, twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320. If you want to hang out with us, hang out in the chatty house. Uh, always a good conversation happening there. Uh, regardless of what we're talking about, chatty house is going to have a good convo going. That's what I love about it. Mm-hmm. So you can join it there. Dr. David asked if um, Monty McNair would include Sasha in any trades. That is a really, really That's intriguing a great question. Cue. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have to look at Sasha in a couple of different ways too. Yeah. So first of all, he signed a three year deal, but the third year is non guaranteed mm-hmm. or it's partially guaranteed. And so like a team could look at him in a couple of different ways. For me, if I'm looking at it right now and I have to choose between him and Trey Lyles, and all honesty, yeah, I choose Trey Lyles. Yeah. It's not even a question for me. Yeah. So that's so if he has to be included in a trade, my only concern is that the Kings believe what the Kings believe he will be and, and how much they sold him being in Sacramento for his career as part of this equation and all that. I, I There is something in me that says that their like, promises may have been made to get him mm-hmm. to, to Sacramento and then to go back on your word and trade him three months later might not have been what some of those promises were about. And so... I think that he does have game and I think that there is a way that he can help a team. Mm-hmm. And I even think there's, there's a way he can help the Kings. I I would agree. But I I'd even say at this point, if you were to go get out, uh, go out and get another forward, mm-hmm. I would probably include one of my forwards. And if I had to choose between my forwards, I'm going to have, you know, Keegan Murray is untouchable in, in this scenario. And then after that, the next guy down is the next best player is Harrison Barnes. And then, the next best, I would start tiering them. Mm -hmm. And then you have to see what you can get away with a trade. And, you know, like we were talking at the break and someone, for some reason, people bring up Jonathan Isaac all the time. And like, can I I real quick talk about Sasha real quick? Yeah. Last thing on it. It's not about getting rid of Sasha. 
No, it's not the, like the Kings need to just get rid of this guy. It is that, Hey, you know what? He could probably be a valuable asset who doesn't have a consistent role here. And maybe another team views him as a valuable asset who could have a consistent role on their team. That's why his name is being brought up. It's not because yeah. he stinks or something. No. Well, and I'd even add that if you're looking at him and, and, uh, and Trey Lyles, if you're looking at them as potential trade guys, right? Mm -hmm. One of them makes eight million. One of them makes like six and a half. Mm -hmm. So like they're almost interchangeable in a deal, and that's why I I, I bring him up. Oh, it's okay, like, yeah, yeah. Like again, when you're looking at the Sacramento Kings, you have to look at players at some point as their salary cap figure. Mm -hmm. You've got Fox, and you've got Sabonis, and you've got Keegan Murray, and then you have to know what Keegan Murray will be down the road as far as salary. Mm -hmm. Then after that. Like it, it sounds horrible and and just like not very nice, but Kevin Herter has to be looked at as like a seventeen point five million dollar salary as a as a trade block that you right. can move. Right. And Harrison Barnes, if you need to get a, if you're trying to get a forty million dollar player, it's going to take a seventeen and a eighteen million dollar player to get to thirty five. So you're within twenty five percent to make a trade, and right. that's how you have to look at these guys right. at some point, which is which is lame and not cool, and and it it's it feels bad but it's the reality man but it is it is a reality that these guys are you know you can't go out and trade davion mitchell for anyone in the league he makes five million bucks mm -hmm. and then if you tack in chris Duarte's four million bucks now you got nine million so now you might be able to get up to 12 million dollar player mm -hmm. so that's how you have to kind of look at these things at some point and it's not just like how do i throw all these things in and and have them come out the other side and like you know have a trade work because mm -hmm. there are very strict rules to NBA trades. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like, <laughs> that's why I like the NFL so much with their salary cap structure, because you can trade anybody for anybody as long as you got the cap space for it. <laughs> well, yeah, but then you deal with dead money and you deal with yeah, all yeah, like, no, no doubt. It's not, it's yeah. not a hundred percent that, but it's not, you don't have to salary match and do all that. It's like, if the salaries work for this year, you gotta, you get, you have to figure out next year, next year, but if the salaries work this year, you're golden. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And so, anyway, to to back to Jonathan Isaac. Finish the point on Jonathan Isaac. Yeah, like please. I like Jonathan Isaac as a player. Like there's a, he does fit like what you might think the Kings need. Yes. 6'11, crazy wingspan, crazy athleticism. Kyle, he's played 176 games in a seven year career. And Harrison Barnes games played streak is at 185. <laughs> that the conversation's over. I'm not paying a guy seventeen point six million dollars next year as well, who doesn't play basketball. And it's unfortunate because, you know, the Kings were on the court when he blew out his knee in the bubble mm -hmm. and watching Harry Giles go over and talk to him while he's laying on the ground and had blown out his ACL. And you knew he had blown out his ACL <sighs> and watching Harry Giles, a guy who had been through it multiple times, having like a conversation with him on the court. That was hard. Yeah. But that's you. If you want to be a team that doesn't miss games, you don't go trade for players that miss games. Mm hmm. You know, it is what it is. Even even when and and again, I I just I couldn't agree more with you. This is not about Jonathan Isaac on paper necessarily. No, like because on paper he makes all the sense in the world. And honestly, a reason he's probably available is because of everything you just said. If Jonathan Isaac was playing eighty games a year, seventy five games a year, whatever number, I don't think the Magic are like, yeah, we need to get rid of this guy. Well, they probably wouldn't have drafted both Mo Wagner and Paolo Bancaro. They probably wouldn't even have been in the running to draft one of those yep. players because they probably would have been a better team. Yeah. But the fact is, he's not. He doesn't play, and yeah. you're not a good team when he's on. You're, he doesn't help your team win because he can't stay on the court mm -hmm. long enough to play. Yeah, and I don't hate the idea of, like, if Jonathan Isaac was a free agent. Yeah, like a low gonna, budget, like two-year five. Take a flyer. Right. That's... And in fact, frankly, that's what I think the Kings need to probably do a lot of this offseason is just go find, yeah, hey, you're 6'10 and athletic. Maybe you can play. Maybe you can't get in here and we'll see. And if he's a free agent, I would love the idea. I'd be all aboard. Yeah. But I'm not giving up assets to go get him. No, and, I, I'm, I'm fully, I'm fully yeah, on board with yeah, that too. It's yeah. tough because some of these players, they can't help you. Yeah. But you have to balance so many things when when you're you're making commitments and like you're certainly not going to trade Harrison Barnes, a guy who doesn't miss any games for a guy who plays, no. you know, what amounts to two NBA no matter, seasons in seven. No matter how, geez, putting it like that is nuts. Um, that And that's just it. No matter how much better Jonathan Isaac is than Harrison Barnes, Harrison Barnes is better when Jonathan Isaac isn't playing. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, that's. Yeah. And I, I, I would say that Harrison Barnes has proven to be a much better player than Jonathan Isaac over his career. And part of that's because Jonathan Isaac just can't like he can't develop as a player because he's not on the court. Yeah. So his, it's his, tough. His third season, he played 34 games. He's 11.9 points, 6.8 uh, boards and over two blocks a game, almost two and a half blocks. a game. Yeah. <sighs> Karolinko. That's like what he'd he loved. To, right. You'd love you'd love that stat line. Yeah. As the Kings backup center. He's a he's a Andre Karolinko type player, like a or a, a, I shouldn't say backup center next to Demo, uh, yeah. Domas. Yeah, he's a disruptive fourth. He, he can be. He he. But the fact that he can't play, yeah, that's most just of the time. Like, hey, the conversation's over. Yeah, we can talk, and that's so. And like I said, you can talk injury flyers in in free agency. That's yeah. it, it, fine. But at the at the trade deadline, I would way rather go see them. I get a player that they they are much more confident will be on the court and impactful for this year. No, totally. That's so, if they're making a move, you've got to you've got to improve the top. Like I would say, I would like to see them improve the starting lineup, but yeah. I think you're more likely to, you need to improve the uh, the top seven of your rotation. I want to get back to what we were talking about earlier with uh, I, it's not a report from the athletic. It's a Right, a discussion in the athletic, a write up, an article in the athletic. Yeah, from David Aldridge and Josh Robbins. Uh, David Aldridge, of course, very plugged in in Washington D.C. Uh, Josh Robbins is a is a beat writer for the Wizards out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle Kuzma. They basically they went through the entire Wizards roster, and were like, "All right, if they make the whole roster available, who goes where for what?" And the Kings came up as a fit for Kyle Kuzma. And the deal that, and I don't want to get into the Kuzma fit. Does he fit? Does he not? Like we've done that a million times. Yep. Talked about the merits of it. Great. The trade that Josh Robbins lays out is Kyle Kuzma to the Kings for Kevin Herter and Trey Lyles. And I know that you're big on the Kyle Kuzma idea because his contract is relatively affordable He does things that would immediately help the Kings if you plug him into their rotation. And again, that affordability aspect of it is is key. Do you still like the deal if it's Herter plus Lyles? No. And I think one of the reasons why I'm not even considering that deal, Mm -hmm. like maybe you consider, like again, Davion Mitchell and um, and Kevin Herter and in a trade, right? Sure. But I don't think I'm, I'm, crushing my depth and, and then having to come up with the new starting shooting guard mm-hmm. in order to make that deal. And, uh, again, I, I like Kuzma. Yes. I, a, as a player, I, I like his contract better. And I also like the idea that if Kyle Kuzma doesn't work out a year from now, two years from now, because of his contract and, and just the declining scale and mm-hmm. what it is, it's so easily movable. If it doesn't work out, just, okay, it didn't work out. We can yeah. move him very easily right i think if you're dealing with washington washington is a team who on the season is nine and 37 Mm -hmm. nine and 37 that's they're done they're cooked and they're not cooked this year they're cooked next year they're probably cooked the year after and they thought they thought they were assembling a team that was going to like win a little Uh, i think they're assembling a team that would help them like get through a time Right, like a, yeah, a right. A, they a group of seasons. They thought they were putting together no. a roster that wasn't going to be nine and thirty-seven after forty-six games. Yes. So at this point, though, if you're dealing with Washington, what Washington wants is a, is the trade capital, and I think the biggest piece to what Josh Robbins and and David Aldridge wrote was very specific. It's that you know Washington has been asking for two second, uh, two first round picks, but that price is probably a little higher than what they're willing to accept. And so if I'm the Kings, I'm trying to figure out a way to piece together a deal that does not include uh, Kevin Herter, uh, certainly, mm-hmm. and and not even Harrison Barnes. If this is the player Harrison Barnes is going to be, and I can get that player, Harrison Barnes, the player the who's been here. The one from the last here, few games. Yeah, the one from the last few games, but the one that's been in Sacramento for the last five years. Right. If sure. I can get that player as my third forward, with Keegan Murray and Kyle Kuzma as my starters. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. So now right. how do I construct a, de- a deal? Right. And like, there are ways you can do it, but that's where you start. Like, okay, if you have to trade Trey Lyles and a deal like that, mm-hmm. 
where you're not giving up Kevin Herter, but you're giving up Trey Lyles. But so you're looking at Lyles, you're looking at Duarte, you're looking at Davion Mitchell mm -hmm. and throw in it, whether it's Kessler or throw in like that's you can make the money work without attaching either Herter or Barnes. And now if you're the Kings and you're trying to get good now and you're trying to take a huge step now, if there's a way that you can do that without touching the run it back core mm -hmm. where you're inserting a, a top five player into your rotation, maybe a, a probably a starter. A yeah. If you're, yeah. 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 Let's even say like Kuzma might even be like your fourth best player, maybe fifth, right? Yeah. Right there. But if you're doing that, now what that does to the rest of yes. your rotation right. is amazing. Right. And the fact that you're losing Trey Lyles is a bummer. But the fact that you're inserting Harrison Barnes into that that spot. Right. And Kuzma is taking Harrison Barnes' to spot in the rotation. Yeah. See, now that's when it's like, okay, would I give up a first? Yeah, I'm giving up a lottery protected first. Yes. Um, in 2026 and 27. Well, like whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm also giving up maybe one or two second round picks as well. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that is a happy medium where you're, they may not want the player. That's kind of where they're at. They don't need the player. Mm -hmm. What they need is a couple of contracts, a couple of people that might actually fit into their rotation right now just so they can get through this season and next. Mm -hmm. But realistically, they're they're making a trade to get to uh, to get the draft picks, the draft capital. Yeah, and that's where so <laughs> our guy Buddha said that's a championship level team right there. Uh I I don't that I don't know, but I feel way better about that version of the Kings than I do this one. The one that you just laid out where it's Kuzma yeah. in the starting lineup and now Harrison Barnes is is your seventh guy. Yeah. And that that I like that so much better. Let's get let's get Kenny Caraway in here. D'Lo and Casey. Uh, Kenny Caraway in here for the handoff. Uh, what's going on, Kenny? Yo, yo. Uh, how do you feel about that idea? So I don't know how much of that you heard, but in The Athletic today, David Aldridge and Josh Robbins from Washington, they mentioned a Kyle Kuzma trade to the Kings and a hypothetical one, not a report, not a source, to, just throwing what it out it there. Look like? Kevin Herter and Trey Lyles. Kevin Herter and Trey Lyles. So we're, James and I are both pretty much out on that idea. But if it's Trey Lyles and then the other stuff to make the money work for Kyle Kuzma, where you have Kuzma in your starting lineup and now Harrison Barnes is your seventh guy, mm -hmm. that I think makes the Kings really significantly better in a way that just Kyle Kuzma in a vacuum does not. My first thought is I'd rather keep Kevin Herter and trade Harrison Barnes. Now, why Washington would do that? Not exactly sure. Um, no knock on Harrison. It's just, right. you know, he's got more years on his contract, more money, things of that nature. And uh, they're probably not trying to add a whole lot of long-term salary. Sure. So that that would be an issue. But my first thought, if we're just talking players and what I'd rather do, is I'd rather keep Trey Lyles and, and move Harrison Barnes. Really? Uh, see, huh. in, in my, like, if I'm judging those two at this point, I think Herter does because he's 25 because he does stretch huh. defense and all that stuff. That's one thing. But I I also if I'm the Kings, I tried to get it. I try to get a deal done without either of them in it. Oh, for sure. And if Absolutely. you can do that, that's where yeah, that's I, where we're laying out. That's yeah. first and foremost. Like I just I'm, I'm saying Harrison because I feel like you got to give somebody up. But but if you can do a situation where both Barnes and Herter stay. Uh, but you yeah, said that, it, real, real quick. I'm fascinated by this. You said you'd rather trade Harrison Barnes than Trey Lyles. Yeah, I trust I trust Trey Lyles in that role more than Harrison Dang. Barnes oh, at this point. That's coming off the bench and uh being able to do stuff. I mean I I, I need I need somebody that can stretch the floor and isn't going to be afraid to stretch the floor and, and shoot and is going to rebound and could potentially play um you know, the four or the five in certain situations coming off the bench. And I trust Trey Lyles a little bit more with that right now mm. than I do Harrison Barnes. That's what I'd be fascinated to see. Cause I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I agree or disagree with that, which is good radio, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I would be fascinated to see what Harrison Barnes looks like if put into that role. Cause James, you and I were talking about earlier, the, 
like what makes Harrison Barnes valuable is his his ability to take on a role within a team that is a background role that is a that is a fringe okay you're in the starting five but you're very much number five among those five I'd be really interested to see if he is the second guy off the bench where there are going to be times every night where yeah hey you're probably the number two scoring option well, maybe the number three scoring option w- w- real quick Kyle, i'll say something about that yeah and i and i and i like harrison i love harrison but i don't i don't know what happened i want to be perfectly clear when i say that i'm just trying to figure mm-hmm. out what happened but he was asked to take like the the most reduced role ever in his career mm-hmm. this past year and he was gone for 40 games like he couldn't handle it yeah he couldn't do it and still be productive mm-hmm. He was like, oh, well, you need me to be the fifth scorer? Well, I'll just, I'm just gone. And not that he was pouting or anything like that. I'm just saying he didn't know how to handle that. But th- so now for like, yo, come off the bench. For an increased role, though. Yeah. Increased, but Trey Lyles has plenty of nights where he gets four or five shots. Yeah. Like he's not getting a lot of looks. That's, that's I fair. would I would think that if you had Harrison Barnes as your off the bench with Malik Monk as your two centerpieces off the bench. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm that you're going to have that the Barnes is going to play a much more crucial role than he did as a starter. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's what we always talk about when it comes to why you, you don't put Malik Monk in the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. You put Malik Monk where he's best suited, which is as that, that guy off the bench who gets to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. You put him alongside De'Aaron Fox and we see it in bursts during the game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but having two ball handlers on the court at one time is a, is a good thing to have, but also there's times where it just doesn't work and it's clunky. Mm-hmm. And so in my opinion, like, like having Harrison Barnes move to the bench might just open up a whole new world for him. He goes from number five to number two. And that's, that's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. And, and like, yeah, you got to build out the rest of the roster, right? Because you do, if you make that move, if you somehow make a move with Kevin Herter and with, uh, Harrison Barnes still on the roster to go get Kyle Kuzma, mm-hmm. it really does got your depth. So mm-hmm. you're looking at no more Chris Duarte, no more Davion Mitchell. Um, you're looking at no more, no more Trey, Trey Lyles, Lyles, right? And you're probably looking at no more Kessler Edwards, right? Or no more Colby Jones, or or no more Alex Len. One of those pieces is going, mm-hmm. and so now you got to look at your team and go, how does this piece together? Mm-hmm. And then how do I recover after that? And can Keon Ellis backfill? Can, if Colby Jones is still on the roster, can Colby Jones backfill? Or do I need to make a secondary move to go get another piece? Do I need to go trade a second round pick for to a team that has a hole mm-hmm. and needs to, or, or has a salary cap issue? Like the Golden State Warriors. Is there a player on the Golden State Warriors that's a low budget player, but you could give a second round pick to and you absorb that contract into your 15th roster spot mm-hmm. and they save, you know, upwards of $40 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it's, there's something like that out there that you could actually keep stacking up and making your team better. That's where it starts to get, it, it gets interesting. And that's why I don't like waiting mm-hmm. until the last second because yeah. all of these things have to fall into place at the same time. Yeah. I, th- I think the biggest thing for me right now is, that's is and I uh, well, keep using the qualifier. I love Harrison Barnes. It's, it's not a dig at him, and it's not about his talent. I just don't trust him. I don't trust him to show up. Hmm. Yeah, I don't trust him. And that 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 doesn't that mean doesn't, he can't. And that's not. And that doesn't mean I don't believe he can. I just don't. But but trust him. But it, you don't trust him because this has been more than a decade of this. Mm-hmm. Like, well, that this and- is just kind of who he is as a player, and it's not bad. But I understand why you wouldn't want to be like, yeah, let's give that guy a bigger role. It's funny because I don't trust Kyle Kuzma, but I trust his contract. <laughs> and so now if, sure. if you're not trusting one guy and I'm not trusting the other, like, uh, well, that, what's that, going on? With, with Kuzma, he may do like weird stuff, but I know you're going to, one way or another, you're going to know he's out there. I don't <laughs> like that. I don't know. Harrison could just be a ghost. Yeah. 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 I, I'm not comfortable with that. I think there's a role there though where he could really find success and and be a and it would like make him a much better player within the confines of who the Kings are. So, and we're talking about shooting, we're talking about versatility defensively, mm-hmm. talking about a guy and if you need to go big, 
at some point and you can go Fox or, or monk with mm -hmm. Harrison Barnes, Kyle Kuzma and, mm -hmm. and Keegan Murray all on the front line together with Sabonis mm -hmm. or with the JaVale McGee. Uh, I don't know. It's intriguing to me. I, I, I would at least, if I can venture down this road and I can put a P, uh, put a deal together that for pieces, I would do it. Last thing real quick. Then we got to get to, to D'Lo and KC. Uh, Kenny, would you, by the way, next week we're calling it D'Lo and Kenny. Yeah. Uh, I'm with no that. KC I'm allowed. With that. Okay. Yeah, very yeah, good. Not, not next week. Okay. Yeah. That's for, for no KC. tech nine yeah, being yeah. played either. Yeah, no, no chance. Uh, real quick. You're an all-star replacement in the NBA all-star game in Indiana. You know, you're not going to play a lot. Do you want to go? I want to go because I like the All Star stuff. Okay. I don't know if these NBA players feel the same way about that, especially if you've already gone. Mm. No doubt. All right. Very good. Uh, that's Kenny Caraway. D Lo and Casey are coming up next right here on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Twitter.